I'll leave this on the card and I'll come back and collect it later. Lovely. Thank you very yeah, much. So it's Thank you. Basically, anywhere around here, you'll be picked right. up. I would imagine there are invisible people sitting here. Yes. Right. <laughs> you can move around if you like. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Watch, watch my space from where to where. You've got the whole of you, the whole of the. This uh, board is visible. From, from that wall to that wall. All right, you that's have, fine. You're in shot the whole time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Uh, today's presentation is about uh, change to the teaching style. So what I was teaching, the way I was teaching before, and what I made a change, and then what's the feedback or the evaluation. So I'm Sohail Ahmad and uh, I'm a PhD student in finance. Uh, let's see what I did. <laughs> so initially I was thinking, uh, what can I change? So there was a question mark in my head and you see, I didn't know, then suddenly I got an idea and then I applied and then I know how it went, and I'm going to tell you all of that. Sorry. So the outline is, first, what tutorial do I teach? What my teaching style was, the old, I call it. I call it teaching as a process, and then I will tell you what were the shortcomings, that's why I wanted to change some of the things and what the change is, and then I have two plans. So I implemented two changes in my teaching style in the class. And I will tell you what was the evaluation by the students, how they assessed it, and then what's my action plan for the future. All right, so about the tutorial. What do I teach? I give tutorials on financial derivatives. It's a course of third year bachelor students. So this consists of four to five problem sets in one tutorial session. I have a time slot of one hour. The average group size is 20 to 25 students in a class. And which learning style do I follow? There are four main learning styles that we learn. Activist, reflector, theorist, pragmatist. The nature of this course suggests that I should be more of a theorist and maybe reflector. So what I follow and the way I solve the questions is because there's a whole theory behind it. Then there are formulas or the models derived. And then I have to give to the, I have to ask the students to solve the questions related to that. So probably I have to be a theorist, but personally I'm not a theorist in the style of teaching. I, I like deep learning style. So reflection matters a lot. So the tutorials for me fit into the apply understanding part of the learning cycle that I call the, the teaching process. All right, so what's my the old, the teaching style? So I consider a tutorial both teacher and students are going to be part of the tutorial. Then there is a problem set which is linked with the students and the teacher. So the teacher has to give the solutions of the problem set. The students have to understand that problem set. How do I do? I say I'm a teacher, I will be teaching, then this is my main strategy, I would call this. How do I do that? I first try to understand the student's level for that particular tutorial. Then I introduce the topic a little bit. And then, depending on the problem set that we both have, we are uh, known with, we identify the formula. How can we solve that question? We write down the solutions step by step together. And then, as an interaction, I always ask questions from the students. And then I also get the feedback. Yes, if I get yes, if they have any questions or any feedback, then we apply another deep learning strategy. And how do I execute that? There are two parts of it. Either fellow students sitting in the class, I would ask them, can somebody 
try to answer this question raised by some other student if you really got this. If not, then I would revisit the formula that I will tell you how I follow. So students may explain better than me because they know the level of each other and they know how the lecture went because this tutorial is just the problem solution supporting the lecture following. And then I as a teacher would support this explanation and verify the steps by going back to the solution steps and answering. If they finally say no, then we will move on to the problem set number two and keep doing this cycle. This is how I follow the steps in my tutorial. That's my oldest style. What are the shortcomings? To follow this in true spirit, the challenging and time-consuming problem sets. The nature of the course is too mathematical, so it might be boring and becomes too challenging if the student didn't understand some of the formulas in the lecture. So it becomes challenging for me. It becomes challenging for the students because I'm trying to have a deep learning process there. Not practical for all tutorial sets and sessions. This, this all this style is not really practical for the students because every student, some of the students might be theorists, some of their styles might be pragmatic or uh, activists, yeah? So I have to really think about everybody goes home with some understanding. Of course, I cannot convey the, com I, I cannot make sure that, I would try to, but I would not be sure everybody understood everything 100%. So a student is different Learning styles may not like the way I teach them, so I have to un respect that. Because this previous whole thing asks the students to give a lot of feedback and have a lot of interaction. And mostly the students are not that interactive as we ask them to be. So it's time for change. All right? I'm going to change the teaching style, and this is my plan. What's my plan? So I'm a tutor. I have tutorial material. So I say, I, 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 I design two strategies. The strategy one, so I will implement this strategy in some of the tutorials, and I'll implement another strategy in other tutorials and see what are the results. The strategy one. I divide the tutorial questions four in two parts. The complex ones and easy ones, but interesting for group activity. The complex ones I'll be solving on the board myself, and the interesting ones, easy ones, where the, the class doesn't uh, make it a fish market, but it still solve the questions and uh, are on the track. So what I do, I'll solve the difficult or the challenging questions on the board, step by step, ask for the feedback, whether they understand or not, and I also provide a handout for the activity where the groups small groups in twos, threes and fours, they would try to solve this. This is one thing I implemented in the class. The other thing I implemented, the strategy two, on Thursdays, actually I teach three tutorials, same ones. So what I thought, in, on, in the first tutorial, to the first group, I would solve the tutorial questions on the board and keep the solution on it. So, <clears throat> the two other groups would have the solution written on the board. I will just change the boards, yeah? And walk them through with each step of the problem set, yeah? And ask them whether they understood or not. So, strategy one was introduced in two tutorial sessions for four groups. Questions for group activity were related to tabulation and drawing the graphs. So it was easy because they can tabulate, talk to each other, and see what numbers can come up, and then graph, draw the graphs. Strategy two, in two tutorial sessions for two groups. So on Thursday, as I explained, at 13, 15, I had to teach the group three. In that class, I solved all the questions on the board, and group four at 14, 15, and group five at 15, 15 were focus group of strategy two. And then I assessed and got the feedback regarding the overall teaching styles. This was the assessment. So I asked them to write down for me, what did you like? Which style did you like? Whether you prefer this one or the other one, and what do you think, what are your main comments? 
So I will tell you uh, how did it go. So it's strategy one. So I think everybody liked it because of growth activity. They wanted interaction among themselves and they knew where and how to draw the graphs and it was easier to tabulate things and understand. So some of the comments were, I like the activity because of the detailed solutions. Afterwards, they gave the detailed solutions and gives confidence to them to solve at their own. Let, let's us think independently, which is also very critical for understanding. And they had the other negative feedback was to complete the task, they had less time. I would say this was because the questions are really challenging and you cannot, out of one hour, if you have four questions to solve, you have only 15 minutes for each. And then you have to hand over the material, you have to take the attendance, and then for the group activity, uh, some of the minutes are lost. So, so overall, you are really tight on a schedule. Yeah? So I can understand this is not going to work for every tutorial. If the level of the tutorial session, uh, the difficulty level is very high, then this strategy might not work. So this was my analysis from the evaluation. So strategy two, most of the students did not like the idea of pre-solved questions and explaining them afterwards. So when I solved the questions in the previous class and then just explained the states, they didn't like it. They said, uh, we like it when you really solve it step by step and stop it and ask her a question, did you understand this? Or ask us the formula, then write down and try to solve the question. So this is what they liked it. But if it was written, the solution was on the board, they said we don't like it. We, 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 we are like, the, the, we take the dictation. You know? So it's like we are just, just, just uh, it becomes boring. We are, we are not enjoying. We are just, just in a way thinking about, oh, when he, when he finishes his talk, we will just write down. And then I also told them, uh, I'm acting like a dictator. Stop writing, stop writing, you know? And then don't write pens down. I will explain these three steps and so on. But I think this was not good for the students, myself. And I think they also didn't like it from the feedback that I got. So some of the comments. Uh, we appreciate that you get enough time to explain the solution <laughs> because maybe for some of the uh, questions I need to give more reasoning or explanation, but like it when you solve it in the class, involve us by asking questions about concepts, follow up steering solution to the questions. And only these were the, the feedback for this. So, should I change my style or keep it same? Action. I think all three strategies work fine. Why? Depending upon the tutorial questions, because we have different lectures from the course, has different lectures on different topics, and each topic might be different, the difficulty level of each topic might be different. So actually, these all three strategies can be incorporated according to the complexity of the questions in that particular tutorial, the difficulty, length of the solutions, so it takes more time, to solve a particular question or particular tutorial needs more explanation or more conceptual framework to be built before you solve the question. And also, of course, I have to consider the learning styles of the students. So in first two, three tutorials, I think because the students are not familiar with you, your style, so I think solving on the, I, I would prefer older style. Why? Because in that way, I would learn what they understand, what they like, what they don't like about my style. And I would try to solve the questions step by step and inquire and ask them questions and ask them feedback if they like this style or not. And then after that time, I, when I've understood some of the groups like this or don't like it or may need to be involved more between themselves, not with the teacher and the student, also between the student, among the students themselves in a group activity, then I will try to switch between the new one and the new two style. So break up between the group activity and some part I solve myself, and some of the solutions where I need more time to explain, I would switch to this style too. Oh, you have no questions? <laughs> 
Thank you. Any questions? I, of course I have questions. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. Actually, it's, it's, uh, uh, I don't understand uh, the second method that we followed. For yeah. the, uh, the improve, to improve your teaching style. The second method it wasn't clear to me, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I agree with you for the, maybe it's, it depends about the lecture, it's like the, the material for the lecture. Sometimes I need to follow the first method, second time. Maybe sometimes I want to follow the second method. But uh, uh, do you think that the, the time that you, it's just one time you, you give them the chance, maybe the, here we have a, like a determinant which is the lecture material for this day. Of maybe, course. So maybe because of that, the answer like that. So did you try to make that for for the future, like to two or three weeks or just? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. I introduced these three two styles over two weeks. So I explained this here. If you if you strategy one. Uh, so I say two tutorial sessions, so two weeks, okay. for four groups. Uh, I saw two tutorials at the same day for... No, 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 two tutorial sessions, so two weeks for four groups. So okay. they essentially <laughs> count eight groups. Mm. Yeah? And the other strategy involved two tutorial sessions for two groups. Because I could do this only on Thursdays, because I have to, I have to teach three groups in a row. Yeah? So from 13, 15 to 16, 15. So after every hour I had a new group. And there was a the green board the, the, with which you write with a chalk, yeah? So I had four sheets of this board, right? So I wrote down all the four questions on each of the sheet, yeah? And then I would explain the same solution to the students. The funny thing was when the students, when I, when I keep the first question solution on visible to them, and they'll just start writing. So I say, come on, I become a dictator, stop writing. <laughs> Keep your pants down, yeah? So, so I know because when they start writing and I'm explaining at the same time, they're not paying attention to me, yeah? So either they, keep, they, either they want to listen to me first and then write, or they write first and then I explain to them. This was the second strategy, the second plan. Mm -hmm. So after the t tutorial, I don't have to rewrite everything for the next groups. Mm -hmm. So I compared the comments from these two groups with the comments from the previous groups, who actually followed my old stuff. So can I can I just check? I'm clear. So for the first of the tutor, of the tutorials, you have a clear board with just the yes. just the problem on the top. No, there is no, no problem. Nothing this is handout. Totally. Problems are okay, on the problems the are on the handout. Brilliant. Yeah. So so you have a totally clear board. Yeah. And so during that tutorial, you're mm -hmm. going through it step by step and gradually building it up. Yes. On the that's board. right. So by the end, you start with a clear. At thirteen fifteen, they have a clear board, and at fourteen fifteen, um, it's all to, it's all it's all on that. Yes. Okay. So then they leave. They and leave. Next another group. Another group, group comes in, and they have all the solutions on the board. Exactly. And you just go through and explain step yeah. by step. So the boards, uh, there are four sheets. Yeah. Yeah. So they roll over, right? Yeah. Like this. So only the first solution is visible to them. Yeah. So what I do is I slowly and gradually. Uh, Show them the solution. Yeah. Oh, I see. So, so, so I, I can move the board. You're yeah. actually pulling it up. It's exactly. So they bits. see the stitch. So they can't see so the whole solution. That's so what I haven't understood. So then so the third, so so then the the third group, yeah. so the they second have the whole thing visible straight away. The same. No, 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 no. Okay. So first group, they have nothing on the board. Yeah. So I keep, okay, problem number one says this. What formula should we use? This formula. Okay, I get interaction and we keep solving. Finish, problem number two, finish, third, fourth. So four, four boards, yeah. four solutions yeah. to the whole tutorial. Yeah? And now the next group comes in. Now the boards are just behind each other, right? Yeah. So I, I can just slide that board up yeah. slowly. Yeah? So, so that part of the solution appears. of the, is visible. Yeah? yeah? So once they come to know, oh, this is question number one, one solution, they. The, the time I start. Okay, question number one says uh, we have to find out the uh, price of uh, this asset. So uh, the data given is this, 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 yeah? And then they don't listen to me, they start writing, yeah? So I ask them, uh, it's better you don't write, listen to me because the whole solution is there. I'll give you time to write it down, yeah? So I, I tell them specifically this. But even then, when I tell them, they don't stop because they can't resist. 
you know? So, uh, I, I told them a joke as well. I would like to share that. So, you know, what I, uh, the person I live with, uh, we have, uh, sometimes we cook biryani, yeah? And uh, he eats a little bit and he says, oh, I don't want more. And then I'm like, how can you resist, you know? You can't eat, I, I can't resist, you know? So it was the same situation with the students. When they see some, some solution on the board, they can't resist writing it. So they stop this. I mean, some of the people actually listen to me, but not all. So I have to raise the board slowly and gradually, but it didn't work. So I asked the students to stop writing, please. And listen to me first, that how I solve this, step by step. If you have questions, you ask me. Yeah? I thought this would be better because they have the whole solution. They can pay full attention to me. Yeah? And ask me questions. However, it didn't work for me. It saved my time, though. Do you think that it saved time? Yeah, it saved. It saved because I don't have to write and ask the questions, right? I just have to explain the solution. The data is this. But you will give time to them. To I will ask. Them. So if they, that, that's what I thought. I will not give them time. I will ask, follow the steps, yeah? I will give them time to write down, and writing down the whole solution, if you have understood, doesn't take time because they have to just uh, just write it. But when you're explaining them, they might not understand some of the things, and then, you know. Okay. So, but I think it didn't work, and the students didn't like it as well. Some of the students, I won't say everyone, because those, those are the few, uh, um, a uh, few of them, for example, never paid attention. <laughs> there are some of the students in the class who pay very little attention, yeah? They, they, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care, so. But the students who really paid attention and they were interactive, asking questions, conceptual, or led to the solution, or relating it to the practical world, they even so, say so. So I have a slightly different question. Yes. Okay, so now I now I understand what it is that you're doing. So you talked about you talked about learning styles. Yeah. Now you understand that the theory of learning styles isn't uncontroversial. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we'll just assume that it's okay for the time being. Um, and you said that because of the nature and the content of the course, you had to do something that was theoretical or reflective. Yeah. Yeah. Dep because of the course. Yeah. Okay, yeah. now I have a question about that. Yeah. I think it's possible to teach anything in any of the four different ways. Um, so yeah. that's, that's my stance. So how, because, 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 you've got a basic problem solving course, okay? So you've got a problem and they need to, they need to understand how to solve it, yes? Yeah. Why not? do that actively, separate your tutorial group into four, each group has to, um, has to solve one of the four questions, one of the four problems, and then present their solution to the others. Why would that not work? And that would be the ideal thing. And we are living in the practical world. Okay, so, te so, so, so explain to me why that wouldn't work. Technically, this is not possible. Technically, this is possible, but <laughs> you cannot have the solution because, number one, not all the students attend the lecture. Okay. Okay. Number two, most of the students who come to, I mean, most of the students come to the tutorials. So they assume that they will read the slides later on and come to the tutorial and understand what's going on. The second thing is, they think they, I'm, I'm not talking about everybody. Some, some come for attendance, yeah? Some come really for understanding. Some come so they have different styles of learning. Not everybody's there to learn, yeah? But we would assume everybody's there to learn. So if, I, if they follow the course, the, the way the course is taught, because some of the financial models, they, they are built on some intuition, assumptions and a model is built and then you do the simple solutions but if you don't go through that those that procedure and divide the say even if you go through and divide the students the groups yeah as I did in one of the strategy and give them two 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 right so they will only spend time to solve those two questions right hassle with each other 
and even then won't come to the final solution to that question because they have not learned what was going on in the lecture. Number two, they are there to learn what was there in the lecture. So I won't think they will solve the question independently or in a group activity because it's mathematical models, right? It's formulas. It's not just uh, kind of uh, just talking about something mm -hmm. or building ideas, intuition, new things. No. It's like following some proper methodology, yeah? mm -hmm. proper steps. Yeah? And if they don't do any of the steps, then they are not going to reach the final solution. Mm -hmm. And there's just one solution, not there are many solutions to that. So that's also the problem. Yeah? Most of the courses which have this mathematical kind of thing, there's just one solution. Two plus two is four. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah? Yeah, so yeah. I get I get that I get that. So I want to think that if I give them two questions to every group or one question to every group and then maybe they share exchange with each other. So maybe the group that got this question didn't attend the lecture. <laughs> yeah, and this was the easiest question. They couldn't solve the easiest one. How would I expect them to understand the difficult one exchange from that other group? And in the end, my feedback about the course I and mean, their feedback about my teaching would be. Oh, he, does, he comes to the class, he asks us to solve, and we don't know how to solve it. <laughs> so, essentially, they don't learn anything. But this way, they learn something. So, you said, I accept all that. Yeah. I accept all that. However, you said right at the beginning of your answer to my question, that would be the ideal. Yeah, so that would be ideal. My, my challenge to you, yeah. my challenge to you, would be to constantly be looking for ways that you can get closer to that. Uh, I think that that can't be done without the the lecture and the tutor. Why? Because if the tutorial attendance is five percentage of marks, because they encourage students to attend tutorials, yeah, and they assign five percentage of the marks of the whole uh, uh, of the, the complete grade, yeah, full grade, and there is no attendance percentage for the lectures, yeah. So students kind of kind of would like to come to the tutorial, not to the lecture. Yeah. So uh, so what I would say so is so it needs to be so be exactly yeah. so be talking to the lecturers and so be talking to other people about how you. It doesn't have to just be you. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, yeah talking to the whole team. The book, but I, I think yeah, it, it would be ideal. If you it's, if you acknowledge that it's an ideal, that's an ideal. Your responsibility is to look for ways to get there. Yeah, exactly. That's why. And I, you're not going to do it in a day. Yeah, uh, I know, this is not, uh, that's why in the very beginning I said, if you remember, I said teaching is a process, it's not an activity. It doesn't take one day or one activity to, to teach, it's a process. It's a whole process that involves lecture, that involves tutor, that involves teachers, that involves material, that involves your learning style, that involves the student's learning style, your teaching style, it's not just an activity. I mean, if I just change one thing, and it's going to work. It might give some results better. But then I have to re-go and redo the whole process. Yeah? I hope you liked it. <laughs>